Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome everyone to our online NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel and myself Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from the Department of Civil Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part Environmental Chemistry will be uh, covered by me and the second part environmental microbiology will be taught by professor Shudha Goel. And this is my module uh, 3 and uh, I am uh, describing the I am discussing the chemical kinetics. Uh, this is the 15th lecture. Uh, in this lecture uh, I will cover uh, I will show a real uh, real demonstration or real uh, application of uh, um, some uh, method uh, by which we can determine the order of a reaction. Um, in the earlier slides I have shown you what is the order uh, of a reaction um, and uh, how to determine the rate and uh, what are the different methods that we can apply uh, like differential rate law differential integrated rate law to determine the order of the reaction. Here it is the uh, actually practical uh, way I will show you how we can uh, determine the order. Okay. And you know that uh, the spectrophotometer UV visible spectrophotometer which is a very common uh, and uh, um, uh, cheap instrument actually uh, which is uh, which is present in every lab and um, uh, research lab and uh, M M M MSc or MTech labs. Uh, so, very useful instrument spectrophotometer and it is very much useful as I have uh, told you in the um, maybe first uh, first lecture or means uh, 11th or 12th lecture uh, that uh, absorbance values uh, we can use to determine the uh, to actually see the progress of the reaction to monitor the reaction the progress of the reaction. So, here I will explain those things uh, in a simple way so that you understand. Now, what is a spectrophotometer? First thing uh, we have to know here you can see that uh, uh, three uh, famous scientists. The first one is uh, Thomas Alva Edison. You know that uh, the bulb he is the first he has invited uh, he has invited the bulb electric bulb. Okay, Thomas Alpha Edison and uh, mm, uh, which, uh, which is also used in the spectrophotometer not that bulb, but uh, um, the principle okay. and then, um, then you can see the Sir Isaac Newton uh, who has discovered the dispersion of light you know that when white light is passing through a prism uh, you can see it is it uh, uh, you can see the dispersion and then you can see seven different lights and uh, then einstein you know photometer you know that uh, einstein albert uh, einstein um, uh, got the you know nobel prize for this uh, for this uh, photoelectric effect uh, although his um, his most uh, famous uh, discovery is is gas mc square but this is not experimental thing that is why uh, he did not get nobel prize on that but he got the nobel prize on, uh, on that um, photoelectric effect okay so this is the application here so basically all three uh, uh, scientist contribution are here in spectrophotometer what is a spectrophotometer? It is basically um, spectrometer plus photometer gives a spectrophotometer. So, spectrometer you know that um, 
uh, first thing is the light light is you know leg like uh, a man cannot walk with a, without a leg so it is like a leg so um, the bulb you know bulb uh, is the source of light uh, and uh, here actually for the visible light uh, uh, tungsten uh, bulb is used and for the uh, uv source um, um, hydrogen discharge uh, deuterium lamp or uh, maximum uh, deuterium lamp is used now second part is the that uh, diffraction uh, grating that means the light is uh, dispersed in uh, in different wavelengths uh, light with uh, different wavelengths so uh, previously prism was used but uh, now diffraction grating is used now here you see different lights are coming and then it passes uh, through some solution and where the light is absorbed and then uh, then the um, photometer is coming so um, photometer is coming to monitor the light to um, it is like a brain uh, with eye okay so th there are three parts one is the leg uh, that is the lamp part and then uh, heart that is the spectrometer part and then photometer part that is the brain with the eye anyway so this is the um, um, by simple way i can tell the what is the spectrophotometer now uh, the principle of this um, measurement uh, in a spectrophotometer is uh, governed by lambert beer law or lambert law beer law this is a combination um, when a light passes through uh, when a light passes through a medium you know then uh, three things can happen so first thing uh, the absorption can happen if i0 is the initial intensity you know then uh, absorption of light can happen then transmission of light can happen and reflection can happen but if you think about a very good air glass interface then uh, you can neglect because it is uh, below 5% so you can uh, neglect the ir that is reflection part and then it is basically the I 0 is a combination of uh, I absorption and I, I transmission. So, what Lam Lambert said this is actually Lambert Bogger law, but uh, it is more famous as Lambert law. What it is said that when monochromatic light passes through a transparent medium, uh, very important when the mo when monochromatic light passes through a transparent medium, the rate of decrease of intensity the rate of decrease of intensity with the thickness of the medium is proportional to the intensity of light. So, this is the Lambert law. Okay. So, according to this it, it can be said in another words also, but according to this uh, we can say that um, A which is nothing but log I 0 by I t which is uh, proportional to to uh, t okay which is proportional to t and uh, br br another scientist he he extended this br later applied the theory to solutions with different concentrations so by combination it is called br lambert law so, this is in a medium and this is uh, beer law in some concentration with different concentration. So, it is uh, basically solutions okay, with different concentrations. So, when you combine these two then it will come as log I 0 by I 2 which we call at absorbance. Absorbance is log I 0 by I 2 A is epsilon into C into T. This is the combination this is the Beer's Lambert law. So, what is C, what is T and what is epsilon? T is the thickness, okay. C is the thickness, T is the thickness, it is not time. T usually we mean time, okay, but it here it is not time, here it is thickness. And C is the concentration, this is coming from Br, this is coming from the Lambert. And then epsilon is a constant, it is called molar absorptivity or absorptivity, depending on the uh, how you express the concentration, okay. So, absorptivity or previously the name was extinction coefficient, now it is called absorptivity. Okay. Now, in the spectrophotometer we apply this principle and uh, there 
in most of the spectrophotometers this T is 1, this is the cell length, path length, okay. path length this is T thickness of the cell that we use it is 1. Okay. Now, uh, because it is a linear equation, so absorbance value can be related to concentration because T is constant, T means cell, the path length we are keeping constant, this is 1 centimeter okay. and C we are varying. Okay. So, absorbance value will be varying with C value and it is a it is a straight line equation passing through the origin. Okay. So, this is called the Beer's law calibration. So, when we do the calibration it is called Beer's law calibration. Okay. We, I will show you. Now, taking some, uh, some specific example, okay, this is a very important reaction and has now become a benchmark reaction. Okay. What is that reaction? You see the, those who are from organic chemistry background, they, they all know that this is nothing but nitrophenol. Phenolic OH, this is a benzene ring, this is an OH group with, an, with, a, with a benzene ring, if there is an OH group, we call it phenol. And in, in the phenol moiety, there is another NO2 group attached in the benzene ring, that is why it is called nitrophenol. Okay. nitrophenol. Now, instead of nitro group, if there is amino group, then it is called aminophenol. Okay. So, this is nitrophenol, this is aminophenol. And here, when you put, because phenolic OH group, you know acidic, so this hydrogen can be taken out by alkali. Okay. And then, when it is taken out by some alkali, it becomes O minus. Then, instead of phenol, we call it phenolate. phenolate. <coughs> Okay, O minus this is phenolate. So, it is nitrophenolate and why the 4 is coming because with respect to phenol group it is the fourth position. So, their relative position is 1 and 4 that is why 4. Now, now this is a uh, this is the spectrophotometer using the spectrophotometer I showed you the the, uh, P, uh, the schematic uh, drawing for spectrophotometer the light is passing through the prism with different lights, monochromatic light, it is dispersion and then it is passing through the medium that is okay, uh, some solution which is kept in the cell. Okay. Let me go back, here this is the light source and then it is passing through a prism, so different lights are produced uh, with different wavelengths and then it is passing through a medium, this is the cell actually and this is the 1 centimeter, after that the absorption of light is measured, how much absorption occurred, which light how much absorbed that is measured. After that this curve, this is called um, absorption spectra, spectrum 1, if it is 1 this is singular number spectrum and if there are many, so it is called spectra. So, 4 nitrophenol, what we are doing actually, we are doing, we are, we are reducing, we are reducing the nitrophenol to aminophenol, this is reduction, nitro group is coming to amino group, so this is reduction. So, we are reducing nitrophenol to aminophenol, this can be done by hydrogen gas, uh, zinc HCl which produces hydrogen gas or we can do it by a strong reducing agent borohydride, although this reaction is thermodynamically um, feasible. Um, but it is very slow, kinetically it is slow. So, whether some reaction will happen or not that will be decided by thermodynamics, chemical thermodynamics and how fast it will go that will be decided by kinetics. Okay. So, here the reaction if there is no catalyst only sodium borohydride then the reduction is very very slow, it is possible but it is slow, it takes maybe 24 hours, 48 hours something like that. Now, if uh, it may take long time, okay, but if we put some catalyst, then it becomes faster. Okay, that is a separate chapter. Catalyst I will discuss in uh, next module. Next uh, module. Anyway, so you should know it; otherwise, you will not understand. So this is basically we are doing nitrophenol reduction to aminophenol by using uh, the catalyst iron zero nano catalyst. Okay. Now, this is the actually this is the spectrum of nitrophenolate, nitrophenolate why because as soon as you put the borohydride 
e the the medium will become alkaline so nitrophenol will be automatically converted to uh, phenolate that is why the spectra you are getting this is absorption spectra of nitrophenolate okay nitrophenolate now you have started the reaction by using the catalyst in presence of borohydride which is a reducing agent this is the zero time this is the spectra of the zero time you are doing it in the spectrophotometer so this spectra you are obtaining it is the it is called absorption spectra you are getting in the spectrophotometer okay now you see here 0 minute and this is 12 minute it is going in this way so this is the 0 minute spectra and slowly slowly it is going down so this is the 12 minute spectra okay this is so nitrophenol late actually nitrophenol but nitrophenolate it has already converted into nitrophenolate this is this nitrophenolate has the absorption here here okay absorbance absorbance what is absorbance i already discussed uh, here this is the absorbance a is the absorbance this is nothing but log i0 by it okay so log i0 by it you are putting you are putting log i0 by it you are not putting actually instrument is doing absorbance you are putting in uh, against wavelength because you are getting lot of different monochromatic lights having different wavelengths so you will get this so thus the the maximum absorption occurs at 400 nanometers okay 400 nanometer this is characteristic of the nitrophenolate okay now you see here nitrophenolate is re, is uh, reduced to aminophenolate aminophenolate has no such curve no such absorption but aminophenolate occurs here the 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 absorption occurs here we this position we are not very much uh, now interested we are interested in here how with time this peak is going down that is important for our kinetic analysis okay so what we are doing we are we have started the reaction we are measuring the absorption spectra we are getting different absorbance values at this wavelength at different times okay now we are noted down okay we are noted down at different times what is the absorption absorbance values of nitrophenolate ion then what we will do before that to know the concentration we i told you that we have to do some calibration curve so this is the calibration curve of four nitrophenol actually four nitrophenolate in borohydride medium so you can see here absorbance value with different concentrations we have taken of 4 nitrophenol and then uh, this is the concentration of nitrophenol and then different absorbance values we get and we plotted it to get a calibration curve this is a linear plot this is the Beer's law curve I told you Beer's law curve okay. Now once we get the Beer's law curve then we can see here how it is um, good from the R square value uh, it is very good 0.99 so it is very good calibration curve anyway this is the calibration curve to know uh, the concentration if we know the absorbance value we can tell the concentration from this if we know the unknown uh, unknown solution the absorbance value we can easily find out the concentration so this is required for to know the concentration of the nitrophenolate at different time intervals okay we got some data at different times of four nitrophenolate after we started the reaction so it is under chemical kinetics okay now after getting the data we have made some table at different time intervals different absorbance values okay now we plot it so we know that if it is zero order kinetics if we plot concentration values we have converted the absorbance values to concentration by using the calibration curve okay now we are plotting c values against different times now i told you i already explained that for zero order kinetics you should get a straight line when you plot c versus time so you can see here very good straight line you get with the r square value 0 0.99 and this is the equation okay slope also you can get from here now this is the zero order curve so zero order linear plot we are getting very nice with good correlation okay let us see other curves for other first order second order curves 
you see here first order curves we know that you have to plot l and c versus time ok. So, same data set, but we are plotting l and c versus time. So, you see here it is not a linear curve, it is not following linearity 0.94 is the correlation coefficient. So, it is not linear that means, uh, it is not following first order reaction ok. That means, our nitrophenolate reduction is not following first order reaction. Now, let us plot second order ok linear plot. So, in the second order plot we know 1 by c you have to plot against time. So, we have plotted it. Now, you see here this is also not linear ok. So, second order is also not followed ok. Second order is so among the three 0 order, first order and second order we see that it is following very good linearity, very good linearity uh, and so we can say that nitrophenolate reduction by borohydride, nitrophenolate reduction by borohydride in presence of catalyst, I am ignoring now the catalyst um, because uh, catalyst chapter I will tell you later, I will go in my next module. So, but you just forget it now. So, nitrophenolate reduction by borohydride uh, it is following. Uh, 0 order reaction ok. So, this way you have to first do the experiment here I have used absorbance values to monitor the reaction, but you can use different other different values like fluorescence you can use you can use other uh, properties also, but you have to need the plot you have to need the plot you have to get the data first then you have to need to plot it against time ok different plots you have to make to see which uh, which order it is following. This is the main theme for determining the order and this is the integrated rate law. You have seen that I have used integrated rate law because those plots are these linear plots you, I have already explained to you that linear plots for integrate from integrated rate law we are getting for 0 order C versus T should give linear plot for, um, for first order L and C versus T should give linear plot and for uh, second order 1 by c versus t should give the linear plot. So here, so, here we see that 0 order reaction is following and of course, uh, um, just for information many catalytic reactions we see that specially if it occurs in the surface, it is surface catalyzed reaction many surface catalyzed reactions they give 0 order kinetics ok. Now, um, you can tell me what is the need to know the order ok, Wh why we will tell the order, why we will determine the order, Be because to, to um, order is a very important thing for a reaction, a rate is important, order is also very very important for a reaction, um, you will see later also how it helps ok. So, uh, so I think you have got uh, good idea about the determination of your order by using some simple method. Um, like here by using a simple spectrophotometer, spectrophotometric method you can use and you have also got the idea how to do the calibration curve and what is Lambert's Beer's law ok and what is the main uh, component of a spectrophotometer that also you understood UV visible spectrophotometer ok. So, I think uh, this is one uh, good example of uh, 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 example to determine the order for a particular reaction. Now, um, uh, from this uh, lectures in module 3 we have learned that um, um, from this lecture we have learned that uh, the phonatophenol reduction follows the 0 order uh, reaction kinetics and it is done by applying the integrated rate law. And from the uh, uh, from the lectures uh, under uh, module 3 that uh, chemical kinetics you uh, you know that what is the what do you mean by rate of a reaction, order of a reaction, how to determine the order, how to determine the rate uh, and uh, the what are the different methods to do it uh, to do the to know the order of a reaction, what is 0 order reaction, what is first order, what is second order, what is pseudo first order reaction how does the rate re, rate or um, rate constant depends on the temperature that also I explained and finally, I explained how by simple simple method experimental method actually 
practically you can tell the order of a reaction. And uh, for the last lecture, I explain this is a very, very famous book. This is the quantitative inorganic analysis uh, uh, by Vogel, um, famous person AI Vogel. Um, you can read uh, this book to know the um, spectrophotometer, what is spectrophotometer, what is the component, what are the different components and what is Lambert's Beer's law what is calibration curve all those things you can uh, you can learn very well from this book thank you